we have a guest coming through and is all the way from Canada. Our guest is known for his internationally crafted sound. He was originally born and raised in Lagos, but later immigrated with his family to Toronto. At the age of 11, his musical narratives weave a tale of poverty, determination, love and faith. He is also setting himself apart as one to watch international artists bridging Western and African cultures. Let us make welcome the one and only Shopey. Hello. What's good, bro? How you doing, man? How is it over there? How is it over there, man? It's it's, it's okay, man. It's um, it's getting a little cold. I want to find out what but, um, Independence Day was like for Nigerians in Canada. What was that like for you guys? Did it even phase uh, you people? With coronavirus, we don't shut everything down. No, uh, no. Oh, yeah? All right, like, so let's speak about the do, pandemic. We're just all monitoring on Twitter, looking at how Nigerians are celebrating. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, there's not a whole lot happening right. there. Everything right. is shut down, sadly. Oh. All right, so speaking of um, being shut down, how has this affected you? Because um, one would say that you're still an emerging act in, in the industry, and I'm sure like right. um, everybody was like, ah, Vision 2020, 2020 mm. is my year. How would you say the coronavirus has really affected you from um, progressing with a lot of things you have planned this year? Um, I definitely lost out on some major opportunities. So I'm fortunate when I'm in this place where as you said, I am emerging. I'm not brand new, but I'm mm. also not super established. Yeah. So I had some big, big, big things in play. Like nice. I had some involvement with the Olympics 2020 that was supposed to take place, but mm. that didn't happen. So uh, it was kind of disappointing, to be honest. Um, so the major award ceremony here, which is equivalent to our version of the Grammys, the Junos, I was supposed to do some performances mm. there. So obviously that didn't happen. Mm. However, so that's kind of like the downside. However, I always feel as though um, opportunity comes to those who make the most of their circumstances, right? And so I just use the time to kind of restructure, mm -hmm. to align new team members, and to finally complete this project that I've been working on for a while. So it definitely had affected me adversely, but I've also tried to just be wise in how I manage the time to set me up for uh, a more successful 2021, etc. So. Right. I mean, um, I, I like, a bit of both. Sure. I like that you mentioned that you use it to, you know, do better and like restructure. But I want to know if that has anything, if that has affected your sound. Sound is quite distinctive and also I wanted to find out, kind of like just a, a little more insight on what inspires that. How did you come up with that type of sound? Did it choose you? As cliche as that sounds, did it choose you or did you, you know, were you inspired by people who made that? And with this new space, um, you know, this, this year of not really having that, such a busy schedule, do you think that your sound has evolved in any way or have you, you know, harnessed that a lot better? What's it, what's it like now? I think every time I put my pen to paper, so to speak, I get better. Do you know what I mean? Um, so it's kind of a bit of both. Like the sound found me and I found the sound. At the end of the day, you're, you're a product of your environment. You're a product of how you come up. You know what mm. I'm saying? So I was born in Nigeria. I was raised in Nigeria until I was 11 years old. Even when I'm, And then I moved to Toronto. But even moving to Toronto, like you still hear... Um, a lot of Nigerian music. I, listen, I remember listening to Sonia Day, Fela Kuti, uh, all the way to hip hop and R&B. And so over the years, when I first started making music, I was just making just straight hip hop and R&B. But long story short, as time progressed, I found myself connecting more intimately with my Nigerian roots. Do you get what all I'm right. saying? Um, and that journey for me started um, pre-2013. Do you get what I'm saying? But it kind of like started, let's just say, in earnest in 2013. And so during this break, as, I'm, as I started fusing both sounds, um, I feel as though the more you do it, the better you get. So the more I, I, I dive more and more into my Niger sound, my Niger culture, the authenticity of that part comes out more and more and more and more. I, like, and so I, I, really I, like I do think that did affect the sound. Um, and I just feel as though the music will just keep getting better because okay, just a um, everything is just going to keep getting better. The hip hop and R&B side and same thing with the um, Afrobeat side. So. Right. Definitely. Okay. Um, I like that you responded to that because a lot of the times I see people 
really trying to westernize their music. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but with you, first of all, your name was quite distinctive. It was kind of like a, a breath of fresh air to see someone kind of even have a Yoruba name and stick to that Yoruba name. A lot of the times I'll see like Lil something or like... Lil Shopper. You know, <laughs> or Lil Shoppy or something. It seems to me, especially because you're not necessarily in the Nigerian space, it seems to me that you are quite intentional about keeping your Afrocentric side. I mean, people get to the airport and change their name from Su Su uh, to Shockwell to Susan or whatever. Um, but it seems like like you're you're being deliberate with that. Even your dreads is like you know a crown of Africanness. Like that's something that has been tried that people have tried to eradicate and stuff. Now I don't know if I'm if I'm preaching here, but I don't know if it's intentional for you. But are you trying? Are you being intentional about keeping that African side of you and even that Yoruba ness and all of that stuff? Or am I just am I just reaching? No, you're not reaching at all. You're not reaching at all. I mean, and to be to be frank, this has been a journey for me, right? Because mm -hmm. so on this side, of, <laughs> North Americans can't say Shope. They can't say that Kwe part. So right. everyone just calls me Shope, yeah. right? Shope. So my tag is Shope, I be Shope on this. So depending on what part of the world you're from, I'm either mm -hmm. Shope or I'm Shope. Yeah. So at least I, I offer them that courtesy. Of course. Um, but it's also been a journey for me because when I first moved here, I was teased. You know what I'm saying? So like... Um, kids say the dumbest thing. So what was it like living in a tree? What was it like um, seeing a car for the first time? These were mm. things that were said to me, and I was like, you're an idiot. Mm -hmm. They say, you speak English so well. I'm like, you're an idiot. Of course I speak English well. I did have indoor plumbing. I did have a house. I know what, all these different things. Mm. But, but what that did do was that that caused me to kind of like, I don't want to say be ashamed, because I wasn't ashamed, but it just caused me not of to course, value yeah, my understandably so, you get what yeah. I'm saying, for, for many years. Yeah. And then through a series of events, many things began to happen that as time progressed, I began to realize that, oh my, this thing that I see as a handicap, this thing that I see as a weakness is in fact exactly a great asset. Thing, yeah. Because one thing we're seeing now is that there's this great hunt and desperate desire for identity that a lot of black people in North America have, because they don't know where they're from. You know, yeah. They don't know where they were taken from. Mm. Meanwhile, me, I have the benefit of I know where I'm from. Yeah, exactly. My connection to Africa mm. and Nigeria isn't just ancestry. I was born there and mm. I was raised there. I will be me one so mm. your vanilla, like I eat the food. Mm. I'm okay. part of the okay. culture. So mm. I'm mm. Nigerian. I'm getting goosebumps, bro. My, <laughs> my grandparents are Nigerian. Mm. My great grandparents. I'm like, mm. yo, shoot. Preach. This thing that I haven't valued for a long time is mm. actually a great asset. Mm. And so that kind of like sparked a journey for me. And so mm. over the years, as time goes on, I become even more and more intentional. And like, yes, mm. I want to grow my hair. Up. Yes, I want to have my beads. Yes, I want to use the colors. Yes, I want this to be a big mm -hmm. part of my cultural or my musical brand. Because at the end of the day, guess what it is? That is who I am, right? So I'm not forming for anybody. All right, all right. I like I'm just the fact that. being who I am. Mm. I like the fact that you're and also well. the Western side. I like Appreciate the fact that, that. you're well Thank grounded you. in your Africanism. Uh, um, and I would also like to know what's your take on um, Nigerians on the diaspora who tend to let go of their cultural heritage whenever they go there. They try to speak like the white man. They try to live like the white man, dress like the white man, and do all of those things. What's your take on that? And what would be your message to every one of them watching right now? Right. Um, I, I sympathize because that was me for a long time. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? I sympathize with them. So I'm, I'm never going to be the guy who's going to like stand in judgment about somebody else. I will say, however, that what we have, what you have is a gift. Mm -hmm. It is a gift. You know what I'm saying? Like you look out in the Western world. And one thing my popsy always used to say to me is that, Shokwe, listen, I'm grateful for Canada. Don't get me wrong. We immigrated here for a reason, but Magbagri, like this is not your home. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. True. And you begin to realize that once you start opening up your eyes and start being like, yo, people of color are mm. greatly disadvantaged here. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. there's a lot of opportunity, but there's also a lot of systemic oppression. Mm. And if you, to, to the Nigerians and the diaspora, look around you, right? Speak to the people of color, speak to the black people. I see that a lot of them don't even know where they're from. Like, mm. they don't know. I was just speaking to a good friend of mine. He's a pro baseball player. Mm. And he was saying like, yo, Shokwe, like, or Shokwe, rather, I'm so proud yeah. of your project. I like what you're doing. I don't even know where I'm from, and I'm, I'm considering taking an ancestry, an ancestry test. And I said, bro, do it. Mm. Do it. Like, it just grounds you so much knowing yeah. where you're from. And so yeah. I will mm. say this to the people in diaspora. Okay. I get it. I understand it. Mm. I will say there's beauty in all parts of the world. So, right. I mean, don't neglect your Nigerian. I appreciate that. Sure. Like, <laughs> that piece right there. 
that piece right there is a great benefit to you. Right. Great stuff. All right. All right, Shakwe. But let's let's away from social commentaries now and back to your music. What are you currently working on right now? And I want I want the full story. Like I want to know what you know what made you write that story. What it what it's about. Who is in, who is inspiring? Basically, what's a breakdown it? of everything you're working Basically, on right now. Yes. Everything I'm working on right now. Yeah. Well, well I just I just put out an EP. Mm. Uh, maybe a week ago, the EP mm. is called Rikiki, R-I-K-I-K-I, -I -I. Um, and it's Afrofusion, Afrofusion blending, Nigerian Afro beats with hip hop and R&B. That's 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 how I call. That's what I call what I do, Afrofusion, uh, because again, that's that's my cultural, my musical identity, the Nigerian sign and the hip hop and R&B um, in this part of the world. So Rikiki doesn't really like it's a word that we gave meaning to. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and it just came out of, to be frank, I'd written a bunch of songs, and this was kind of like in the middle of the creation process. And this beat came on, you know what I'm saying? And like, it's just like you're vibing, you're feeling it. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're just, the way you write songs, a, number, a lot of times, at least for me, is that you kind of mumble stuff first, and then you kind of like put words to it later. So just, Rikiki -ki just came out, and it felt so good, you know, between myself and the producer, like, yo, listen. We don't really want to change this because <laughs> yeah. some things are like lightning in a bottle. It's hard to to replicate, right? right? So we said, "What does this mean?" So I did some research and I realized that this really doesn't mean anything, right? So we said, "You know what? Let's give this a meaning, right?" My overwhelming sense of where I am in my life right now is one of confidence. I know who I am. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's taken me a while to get here. I know right. what my values are. I know what my beliefs are. I'm open-minded, but at the same time, I'm very grounded, as you mentioned. All right. And so, so how about I just live in that truth, you know what I'm saying? So we, we kind of gave Rikiki the meaning of confidence, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So if someone is just young and just forming and just saying the most, saying the most, and just dismiss them like, I mean, Rikiki, yeah, they move on kind of thing, right? Um, so and it's I mean I I mean I hope it takes if it doesn't take at the end of the day I'm I'm going to be using the expression, uh, but at the end of the day Rikiki is an EP that communicates confidence that communicates kind of like self actualization if you will mm -hmm. being able to live in confidence live within your convictions but right. then also being ready to accept everything that comes with that right so the love the hate the consequences etc but the idea is that. You, Understand that, like God has created you to be something, so be that thing. You know what I'm saying, um, I, I, and so that EP kind of goes through the gamut of um, Afro beats and and hip hop and R and B to creating this Afro fusion blend. So that's that's officially out. Uh, there's music videos which are currently on the dockets to be released very shortly. I'm always in the studio. I'm always writing. So there's a lot more material outside of this EP that we're getting ready to roll out over the next months right. and years and right. um lord willing as people say i'm here for for a long time not a good time yes all right sir. so um, um your pr team couldn't have done it better but mm -hmm. for people who haven't heard your sound right we would just um like you to give us a quick freestyle of what your sound is like and then we can wrap up with you and then you know how it is right. oh uh, okay oh hey okay can you hear this yeah yeah. Oh, I hear you want yeah, like you know how those oh, I hear you want yeah, like you know me pass. Okay, you know fine, you just know to bash. How you go flex like you got you pass as in why you go vex, you be doing me now. Say go and tell a man you're not the one, no sir. I'm on one but like could it run. I'm a day chop mouse for the phone, so sorry lot to buy fair, I'm a boy. Hey, I know give them face, rara. I just run my race, oh my. go from state to state, oh more. No, I know they chase son up, son no one, female come low, come pro, who we'll see me there. Alrighty, 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 okay. And that's the okay. right part. Yeah. All right, man, big shout out to you, Shokwe. We wish you Such the best of, your, best of luck in all your endeavors. Absolutely. And yes, I think the world is not ready for your sound.